The following table of values represents points x, y on the graph of a linear function. Determine the y-intercept of this graph. So just as a reminder of what the y-intercept even is, if you imagine a linear function or a line, if we're graphing it, if we imagine a line, so let's say that is our line right over there. This is our y-axis, this is our x-axis. The y-intercept is where we intersect the y-axis. Now what do we know about the y-intercept? Well, at the y-intercept, x is going to be equal to zero. So this is the point zero comma something. And when, so when people are talking about what is your y-intercept, they're usually saying, well, what is the, what is the y-coordinate when x equals zero? So we're really trying to figure out what is the y-coordinate when x equals zero. So we know the x-coordinate when y is equal to zero. So this is actually the x-intercept. So this point right over here is the point two comma zero. So when people say x-intercept, that's the, that's the x-coordinate when y equals zero. Well, they, already, they gave us the x-intercept. So that right over there is the x, the x-intercept. But what's the y-intercept? What is the y value when x equals zero? Let's see, they give us what happens to y when x is negative two, when it's one, when it's two, when it's four. So maybe we can backtrack from one of these to get back to what happens when x is equal to zero. So let me rewrite, let me rewrite this table so I can give ourselves a little bit more breathing room. So let's say we have x and we have y, x and y. And they already tell us that when x is negative two, x is negative two, y is eight. And I actually want to think about what happens when x is negative one, when x is zero. Then they tell us when x is one, y is two. When x is two, y is zero. This right over here is the x-intercept. When x is four, y is negative four. So they skip two right over here, y is negative four. So let's just see how y changes with respect to changes in x. So when we go here, when x changes by one, so when x changes by one, y goes down by two. And it's a line, so it's going to have a constant rate of change of y with respect to x. So similarly, when x increases by one, y is going to decrease by two. So y is going to be six here. When x increases by one again, y is going to decrease by two. So we're going to get to four. And we see it works, because if we increase by one again, then it is indeed the case that y decreased by two. And you see here, when we increase x by two, then y decreases at twice the rate, because now we didn't just increase by one, we increased by two, so now y is going to decrease by four. And what's constant here is your change in y over your change in x. When x, de when x increases by one, y decreases by two. When x De increases by two, y decreases by four. Either way, either, either way you think about it, your change in y for a unit change in x is going to be equal to negative two. But anyway, we actually answered the question before without even realizing it when we filled in all of these values. What is the y value when x equals zero? Well, the y value is four. So the y-intercept here is four. We didn't really graph this to scale, it would actually look a little bit more like this if we were to try to graph it properly. So this right over here is four, this right over here is two, and our line looks something like this. Our line will look something like, something like that.